Thanks so much for joining tonight's Vinyasa Flow class. Um, I'm Natalie. Um, so today we'll be working into different variations of crow, um, lots of modifications, lots of options. Um, so a fair amount of hip opening work, some work in the shoulders, um, and working into some spinal mobility for, um, for working into crow. Um, we'll start lying down tonight if you'd like to settle in a moment or two early. And we'll start in reclined butterfly, bringing the soles of the feet to touch, letting the knees splay out. Arms can be by your side, palms face up, or arms are in goal post with the elbows right in line with the ears lying down. Palms also face up. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And if you're not there yet, just meeting us in reclined butterfly, bringing the soles of the feet to touch, arms are in goal post, or arms are by your side, palms face up. And as you make the transition from your day to your mat, and pausing for a few moments to notice how your body is feeling, noticing any tension and tightness, or if you feel pretty open, pretty relaxed. And starting to send your attention to your breath, and taking nice long inhales, and equally as long exhales. And as you inhale, feeling the belly, the ribs, and the chest expand. And as you exhale, feeling the entire backside body release a little bit deeper on the mat. And continuing to take these full rounds of breath, inhales and exhales are equal in length. Noticing any thoughts that may be coming into your mind. Acknowledging these thoughts is valid. And then see if you can let them go. Just knowing that you can return to them after practice. And let's take another full inhale and exhale. Gently releasing the arms by your side and using the hands to draw the knees together, hugging your knees into your chest. And let's take three sacrum circles in each direction, really releasing the lower back. And so it's three circles clockwise. And pausing at center and taking three circles counterclockwise. And then drawing the knees back into the chest. So first variation of crow here, it's just a reclined variation. And so you're using the hip flexors to hug the knees in and straighten the arms, palms face each other to start, fingertips face the ceiling and rotate the shoulder blades down the back. So the entire backside body is flat. And then from here, flex your wrist, press your palms to the ceiling, dome the back and notice if you can lift your shoulder blades off the mat 
and see if you can hug your knees all the way up into your triceps. And then maybe you lift your shoulders, neck, and head, right? So this is just like crow, but on the back. Keep lifting. Let's take another inhale. And exhale, hug the knees back into your chest, letting that go. Hands to the hamstrings. And just take a few rocks up and down the entire length of the spine. Releasing the lower back, middle back, and upper back. Let's take a couple more. And then slow and steady. And the next time you rock up, pausing there, and gently crossing the right ankle in front of the left. And place the right hand at about three o'clock, press into the palm. Inhale, left arm reaches up and overhead, getting a nice deep side body stretch. And on the inhale, left arm sweeps, planting the palm. Exhale, right arm follows, sending the hips to the right. On the inhale, right arm sweeps. Exhale, left arm follows. And opening through the shoulders, inhale, left arm sweeps. Exhale, right. Let's do one more each side, inhaling and exhaling. Inhale. And exhale, and keep the left hand where it is, bring the right fingertips down. Really press into all 10 fingertips, chin to chest, doming the back. Getting a nice deep stretch through the back of the neck. And let's take another inhale. And exhale, gently lifting your chin off your chest. And walking your hands forward, gently roll over your ankles, and finding yourself in table. Remove through five rounds of cow-cat, really focusing on cat tonight. And so on the inhale, shoulder blades draw together, chest drops, gaze left. Exhale, chin to chest, doming the back. Really puff up between the shoulders as much as you can, creating space here. Inhale, coming into cow. Exhale, chin to chest, doming the back. Inhale, cow. Kind of traction the elbows back to the heels. And exhale, chin to chest, creating space. Two more rounds. And if there's any other gentle movement that feels good in your body, you're welcome to take it. Inhaling. And exhaling. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Coming back to your neutral spine. Big toes touch, knees mats with distance, hips to your heels, and coming to your wide-legged child's pose. And the option to keep the stretch isolated in the lower back and the hips. We're going to get a nice stretch through the lats and the tops of the shoulders. Walk the hands slightly forward. Press into the palms. The elbows lift. Let your chest draw through your shoulders. And we'll take an inhale and exhale. On the inhale, tuck all ten toes under. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. We're right, taking your time to settle into down dog, taking any movement that feels good in your body. Maybe you bend the knees, kind of pedaling the legs. Maybe you lift the heels and then lower them back down. And as you settle into your still down dog, getting nice and long through the spine, in the back of the neck, chest is drawing towards the thighs. Let's take another full inhale and exhale. Inhale, gaze is forward. On the exhale, walk your feet to meet your hands. Maybe you tent up to the fingertips to give the hamstrings some space. And once you find yourself at the top of the mat, inhale, halfway lift, bringing the hands just below the knees. And then exhale, either staying here or slightly walk the hands down the legs, keeping the spine straight and the legs straight. Gaze and tailbone are lifted. And 
and taking another inhale and exhale. Releasing the bind, heel toe the feet slightly wider than the hips, bending to the knees, catching opposite elbows for ragdoll. Maybe you sway side to side, releasing the hips, the lower back. Gently coming back to center, release the elbows, keep the deep end in the knees, chin to the chest, doming the back, and again, see how slowly you can roll up, really taking your time, and finding yourself standing in Tadasana at the top of your mat. And you're welcome to close your eyes or lower your gaze for the next three rounds of breath. Inhale, arms rise, and exhale, hands to the heart. Two more just like that. And on the exhale, hands pause at heart center. I'm taking this moment to set your intention for practice and something to return to throughout class, maybe something to take off the mat and into the week with you. Gently fluttering the eyes open if they've closed, releasing the arms by your side, and finding yourself at the top of the mat if you're not yet there. On the inhale, arms rise, gaze lift, see if you can get the palms to touch as you exhale, hinge at the hips to fold. On the inhale, take a big step back with the right foot, hips are square to the front of the mat, and then exhale, rise right up into your strong high lunge. Maybe you bend into the right knee, send the hip flexor forward slightly, and then straighten the leg back out, feel the glute activate. And then bring the palms to touch overhead, staying here, or bend the elbows, release the hands behind the back. And lifting the chest, lifting the elbows. Keep that deep end in the left knee. Let's take an inhale. On the exhale, hands frame the left foot, press into the palms, dome the back, zip the left knee into the chest, take an inhale, exhale, left foot meets the right for plank. You want your hips and your shoulders in a nice straight line, always the option to lower to the knees. And focus on the space between the shoulders. Think of cat pose. So you're really doming the upper back for five, four, three, two, and one. Option to bend the knees or straight as a board, lower all the way down, untuck the toes, three rounds of baby cobra, keeping the hands and toes down. Inhale, chest and gaze lift, shoulder blades draw together. Exhale, lower, two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. If you'd like a slightly deeper back bend, walk your hands back an inch. Inhale to lift, exhale lower. Inhale, press back to your wide like a child's pose, hips to heels. And then exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. All right, on the inhale, lift the right leg, point the toes really root into the left heel, nice hamstring stretch. And then as you exhale, you zip the right knee into the chest, dome the back, pause for a moment as you inhale, Exhale, place the right foot between your hands. Press into the palm of the left hand. Right arm lifts for your twist. And send that right hip back. And stacking shoulders. Let's take three big shoulder circles here. Inhale, the right arm reaches forward. Down, up and around. Forward, down, up and around. Forward, down, up and around bringing the right hand outside the right foot. Inhale, left foot meets the right at the top of the mat. Exhale, fold. Reverse swan dive to rise up. Inhale, arms rise, knees lift. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's pick it right back up, second side. And so you're tucking the ribs in on the inhale, arms rise, gaze lift, shoulders lift, palms touch, Exhale, hinge at the hips, folding forward. On the inhale, big step back with the left foot, this time square the hips right away, right? 
Squeeze the inner thighs together, rising right up to your strong high lunge. Nice deep bend in that right knee. Slight bend in the left knee. Some of the left hip flexor forward. Feel the glute activate. And then straighten the left leg back out. And from here, bring the thumbs to touch overhead. And press the backs of the hands back, really opening up through the chest. Inhale to goal post. Exhale, draw the elbows in by your ribs. Inhale, reach the arms behind the back. Exhale, interlace the hands, lift the fist, draw the chest forward. And let's take another inhale and exhale. Release the hands, framing your right foot, zip the right knee in, and then step the right foot back. Take an inhale, exhale, lower to the forearms. Right, and right away you can lower the knees, otherwise really resist the mat with the forearms. And gaze this slightly forward. And holding for five, four, three, two, and one. Gently lower the knees, untuck the toes, and lower the hips coming to space. Contracting the elbows back towards your heels, letting the chest pull forward, shoulder blades are drawing together. Really press the toes onto the mat, feel the quads engage, glutes activate. Option is to stay here, turn the hands out to 11 and one, pressing up into seal pose. But notice this action of the shoulder blades drawing even more together, increasing thoracic spinal mobility. And we'll take another inhale, Exhale, lower down. Option to press back through your wide-legged child's pose or draw the elbows in, tuck all 10 toes under, inhale up to plank. Exhale, down dog. On the inhale, lift the left leg, point your toes, root into the right heel. Then as you exhale, zip the left knee to the chest, flex the foot now, and then place the left foot between your hands. And pressing into the palm of the right hand, Left arm peels open, stacking shoulders. Let's take those three big shoulder circles. Inhale, left arm forward, down, up and around. Forward, down, up and around. Last one. Forward, down, up and around. And bringing the left hand to frame the left foot. Inhale, right foot meets the left at the top of the mat. Exhale, fold. We're gonna do a little exercise to work on transitioning weight from the feet into the hands like you do in crow. All right, so start by shifting the weight all the way into the heels, lay on the fingertips. Maybe you uh, flex the toes so they're not on the mat, weight's really in the heels. And then shift the weight forward into the toes, let the heels slightly graze off the mat. And then even if it means bending into the knees, plant the palms on the mat and really press the mat away from you, feeling your back dome like when we started class. And then from here, come back to the fingertips, shift the weight into the toes, and then lower your heels down. Deep bend in the knees, chin to the chest, doming the back. And slowly rolling up, taking your time and finding yourself standing in Tadasana at the top of the mat. All right, so this is called breath of joy. It's kind of a way to move through chair pose. So on the inhale, the arms lift, palms face back or palms face up. On the exhale, bend into the knees, palms face down, and then you straighten the legs, arms up and overhead. Inhale, bend into the knees, palms face up. Exhale, palms face down, bend, and then straighten. And keep moving through this, kind of at your own pace. If you ever get dizzy from the up-downs, you're welcome to stop, of course. Let's flow through one more full one. And when you're folded down, send the weight into the left foot. As you inhale, lift the arms, lift the right leg. Exhale, big step back to your high lunge. Inhale, lift up and out of the left hip. 
And exhale, finding yourself in warrior two. Right foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. Really strong arms. Left knee is tractioning over the pinky toe. And let's move through this flow three times. On the inhale, straighten the left leg, palms touch overhead. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, release. Last one. And this time on the inhale, reach, getting length. Exhale, triangle, micro bend in the left knee. Shoulder blades draw together. Ease towards the right thumb. And let's take another inhale and exhale. And then without changing much, reach the right arm up and overhead, getting length. Keep those shoulders open. Let's take an inhale. On the exhale, bend into the left knee. Hands come inside the left foot. Come onto the ball of the right foot. You gently lower the right knee, untuck right toes. Lizard lunge. So you want to make sure you're forward of the right knee. So you don't want to be at a 90 degree angle, right? Make sure you're not right on the knee joint. Option to stay here. You can heel toe the left foot as wide as the mat. You can lower to the forearms. You can use a block. Wherever you are, you want to press the hands onto the mat to resist the mat, doming the back and creating space between your body and the floor. Let's take another inhale and exhale. Coming back onto the palms of your hands if you lowered. Right toes tuck under, right knee lifts, dome the back, and on the way back, maybe you hover the left knee on the left tricep point, the toes for three, two, and one. Maybe you take a single leg vinyasa. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's take Three rounds of breath, and taking what your body needs. Inhales and exhales are equal in length. And if they're not, you're welcome to pause here for an extra round of breath or two. One more inhale, one more exhale. So we're coming into a variation of yogi squat and velocity. And so on the inhale, gaze is forward, bending into the knees as you exhale, stepping or floating your feet outside your hands. All right, so different variations. So the heels might stay a little bit closer together. You're going to tuck your internal rotation of the shoulders, palms face up, bending the elbows, bringing the hands behind you, and then tuck your chin into your chest. And so it's more of a release to the lower back. Letting the spine release and flexion here. And for these slightly longer holds, I'm trying to work deeper into the sensation instead of letting it go. And let's take another full inhale. And exhale, and gently lifting the head, bringing your hands forward, press into the palms, inhale, lift the hips, and then exhale, exhale, heel to your feet directly behind your wrists. Option to take any variations of forward fold that we've already done, or peace fingers, catch big toes, keeping the bind if you have it. Inhale, lift the gaze, exhale, fold, let the elbows splay out. Continuing to shift the weight forward and down. And then let's take another inhale and exhale. And so we're going to move right into the breath of joy from here. And so we're going to take a nice deep bend in the knees. Palms face up as you inhale, lifting, feel the glutes activate at the top. Exhale, palms face down, bend at the knees, release. And 
Letting the breath lead, inhale to lift, and exhale, let it go. Let's do one more full round. And then this time as you lift up, really root into the right foot, inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, take your big step back to high lunge. Inhale, lift up and out of your right hip. And coming back to warrior two. I'm trying to sink down, not forward. And take the picky fingers and press them back. Feel the chest open. Let's move through this flow three times. Inhale, straighten the right leg, palms touch. Exhale, warrior two. Inhaling and exhaling. Last full round. Inhale, getting length. And exhale to triangle. Micro bend in the right knee. And imagining the entire backside body is flat against a wall. And gaze is lifted. And taking another inhale. And on the exhale, left arm reaches up and overhead, getting length in the side body. Inhaling. Exhale, bend the right knee, hands cartwheel down inside the right foot, come onto the ball of the left foot, and gently lowering in front of the left knee, untuck left toes for lizard. And taking those same modifications or variations, so you can always heel to the right foot as wide as the mat, you want to keep that 90 degree angle. Maybe you lower to the forearms. Whatever you're doing, really resist the mat with the hands. And taking another inhale and exhale. And coming back onto the palms of the hands if you shifted. Left toes tuck under, left knee lifts. And on that, on your way back, maybe you hug that right knee on the right tricep. Point your toes for three, two, and one. Maybe you take that single leg chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, pausing for an extra round of breath if it feels good. And exhale. Downward facing dog. Let's take five rounds of breath this time. You're welcome to take child's pose. Maybe you stay in down dog. If you'd like to, if you have some extra energy, you'd like to work into fire floats, you're welcome to do that. For fire floats from your down dog, you'll walk your feet in, bring the toes to touch, bending the knees, keep the inner thighs glued together. And you're just taking these little hops, kind of working to stack your hips over your shoulders. Let's go five breaths from here. So take what you need. Taking a little bit of time for self-practice. Let's take another full round of breath, in whichever variation you're in. And then taking a moment, we'll be back in downward facing dog. We shifted. And from down dog, we're coming back into Malasana. On the inhale, gaze is forward. On the exhale, step up your floating your feet outside your hands. All right, so the more traditional yogi squat this time, you can heel toe the feet slightly wider. That feels better if it allows you to keep your heels down. Really sink your uh, hips down, chest is lifted. If there's any joint pain, either sit on a block or come right out. And you're using those triceps to help open the hips this time, sitting up nice and tall. And let's take another inhale and exhale. And planting the palms on the inhale, lift the hips, and then exhale, heel to the feet behind the wrists again, and bringing the palms of the hands, any of the four soles we've done before, where palms of the hands come under the soles of the feet, letting the head relax down. Shifting the weight forward, 
regardless of the variation you're in. Let's take another inhale and exhale, We're releasing whatever bind you have. And we'll take a deep bend in the knees, chin to the chest, dome the back, working on the spinal flexion again. As you slowly roll up, and finding yourself in Tadasana. All right, so we're coming into Eagle Pose, taking a slightly longer route to get there. So we're gonna zip the left, the right knee into the chest, kind of to hike the right hip, right? So it's the hip flexor that's really doing the work. On the inhale, take the external rotation of the right hip. Exhale, come through center, draw the right knee to the left corner of the mat. Let's do four more like that. Inhale, open. Exhale, over to the left. So the hip stays square to the front. It's really the hip that's doing all the movement. Last two. Keep those hips squared. Last one, inhale to open. Exhale, right knee to the left corner of the mat and then hook the leg once, maybe twice. And the right arm comes under the left, catching opposite shoulders, backs of the hands or the palms touch. Lift your fingers, dome the back, trying to keep the spine nice and straight. And then trusting the bend of the left knee, root to the left big toe if you feel wobbly. And keeping the arms as you inhale, unwind your right leg, hug the knee in. Exhale, coming into your warrior three with eagle arms. Kind of a nice release for the shoulder girl here. And keeping the hands interlaced, take an inhale. Exhale, bend into the left knee, softening with the right toes, lifting the arms up and overhead, gentle back bend. Inhale, opening. Exhale into your warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle. Two more times with this flow. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Inhale. On the exhale, coming through side angle, hands cartwheel down inside the left foot, come onto the ball of the right, and step that left foot back, press into the palm of the left hand, side plank, roll over the outer edge of the left foot, right arm feels open. And so you can always lower the left knee here. You can also lift the right leg. And let's take an inhale, really lift up and away from the mat. One more inhale, you can also lift the leg like that. And exhale, right arm cartwheels down. Make your way through your vinyasa to downward facing dog. Three rounds of breath in your down dog. And taking what you need. Most importantly, resetting the breath if the inhales and exhales are not equal in length. Getting a nice deep back side body stretch. And let's take another inhale and exhale. All right, from your down dog. On the inhale, come all the way up onto the tiptoes, dome the back, roll forward to plank. And then exhale, lower the knees and untuck the toes. And so a second variation of crow is a little different. It's called baby crow. Um, so baby crow, you do it from your forearms. And you really dome the back, press the forearms onto the mat, just a Fun thing to maybe try. And tuck all 10 toes under, kind of walk your knees in. And similar to crow, you're hugging your knees high up on your triceps, pressing the forearms onto the mat, doming the back, shift forward, and then maybe you let your toes lift up. And gazes forward, 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 and then you lower back down. So maybe take a moment or two to kind of play with that really Think of it as, as like plank, but on the forearms. So forearm plank, crow, but on the forearms. 
Elbows are directly back, knees hug in, doming the back. And let's just work into that for a couple more rounds of breath, gazes forward, and then lower the toes back down, and walk your hands by your feet. Lift the hips coming into your forward fold. And this time, pedal the legs out, so really release the hips, let that go. And bending into both knees, chin to the chest, rolling up. And let's interlace the hands behind the back, lift the fist up and back. And let's take an inhale and exhale. Keeping the hands in a fist, bring your hands to the outer right hip, and draw the elbows towards each other behind the back, release the right ear towards the right shoulder. And gently lifting the head up to center, bring the arms behind the back and over to the left hip, and release the left ear to the left shoulder. And gently coming back to center, bring the arms behind the back one more time, chest forward, lift the arms, inhale, exhale, let that go. Really nice. All right. Eagle second side. This time the weight is on the right foot, and you're going to zip the left knee in without hiking the hip as best you can, standing nice and tall. We'll do that little kind of hip opening and closing five times. On the inhale, the hip takes the external rotation, exhale, left knee to the right corner. Again, keep the hips square, inhale to open, exhale to the right. And two more, really working into hip mobility. Inhale to open, exhale, left knee to the right corner of the mat and then hook the leg once or twice, keeping the spine nice and tall, left arm under the right, catching opposite shoulders, backs of the hands or palms touch, and lifting the fingers, doming the back. Maybe you sink a little bit lower, trust the bend in the right knee. See so if you can keep the elbows as high as the shoulders. Let's take another round of breath. And on the inhale, hug the left knee in. Keep the arms. Exhale, move through your warrior three. We try to keep the hips square to the mat. And letting the arms relax, shoulders. And on the inhale, bend into the right knee. Exhale, left toes touch down. Arms reach up and overhead. Inhale, opening. Exhale, warrior two. We'll move through that flow. Inhale, side angle. Exhale, reverse warrior. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, coming through, side angle, arms cartwheel inside the right foot. Right foot steps back to meet the left, press into the palm of the right hand, rolling over the outer right foot for your side plank. Really lift up and out of the right shoulder. You can lift the leg, you can lower the right knee. And gaze is lifted as you feel comfortable. And let's take another inhale. Exhale, left arm cartwheels back down. Make your way through your vinyasa. Inhale up. Exhale down. Again, three rounds of breath here. And let's take another inhale. Exhale, coming back to down dog. If you took any other variation, and then stepping or floating to Malasana one more time. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step or float your feet to frame your hands. Yogi squat. 
All right, so if you know traditional crow, right, you're welcome to work into it. I usually don't demo with props, but if you have a block, this is a nice way to work on transitioning the weight from your feet to your hands. And so if you're working with the block, the block is horizontal. Uh, step on the block with both feet. Nice deep bend in the knees. Palms are on the mat. And just work on keeping those elbows bent backwards and the knees on the triceps. And then press into the palms, dome the back, resist the mat. And gaze this slightly forward. So you can stay here. Maybe you lift one leg and then the other. Right? Maybe you shift slightly forward, keep the big toes together, and then draw your heels in towards your seat. All right, so elbows zip in, knees zip in. I'm taking a moment or two here to work into variations. If you're really comfortable in your crow, you can take crow to tripod headstand, either back to crow or chaturanga. If that doesn't mean anything to you, ignore it, let that go. All right? Working where it's best for you. And really dome the back, resisting the mat. And let's take another round of breath wherever you are. And then we'll come to forward fold at the top of the mat. All right. This time, heel toe the feet as wide as the mat. And turn the toes slightly out. We'll take waterfall. So really deep bend in the knees and then release the arms. Releasing the lower back, the hips, kind of everything here. And gently coming back to center. Heel toe the feet back to hip width. Inhale, lift the gaze. And then exhale, plant the palms, making your way through your final, final vinyasa of practice. Right? You can also go right back to down dog. We'll all meet there. From down dog, let's take three full rounds of open bath and exhale. Let's really let it go. And releasing into your wide legged child's pose, hips to your heels. And calling to your mind and the intention that you set at the beginning of practice, and thanking yourself for showing up and for taking this time for you. And gently walk the hands back to meet the knees, bringing the knees to touch. And as long as it feels okay, pausing here, right? as long as it feels okay on the knees and the ankles, and just pausing here, we'll get a little wrist stretch in, interlace the hands, and then bring the arms to, or the elbows to like 90 degrees, so the fingertips are pressing to the back of the opposite hand. And then switch. Do that one more time each side. And then interlace the hands again and just take a few wrist circles in each direction. And gently releasing the arms by your side and shifting the weight over to the right. And let's bring the legs out in front. And so let's come into Wide legged forward fold. Feet are either like 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock or 11 and 1. Peace fingers can either catch big toes, let the elbows slide back, or maybe you walk the hands forward, letting the hinge be at the hips and keeping the spine nice and straight. And taking another inhale and exhale. Let's walk the hands back in and bringing the legs together. 
and place the sole of the left foot on the mat. So your left foot, your right leg stays straight. Left foot is about a fist, kind of fist and a half foot distance from the right leg. And on the inhale, you're going to reach the left arm inside the left leg, palm, internal rotation of the shoulders so the palm faces back, bending the elbow, and the right hand maybe reaches back to catch the left. And then tuck the chin into the chest, relaxing down. Let's take another inhale. And exhale, releasing the right hand, slowly rolling up and releasing the left. And we'll take our twist from here. And so the left hand stays behind the back. Inhale, the right arm lifts. And exhale, hooking the right tricep outside the left thigh. The left knee is going to want to kind of cave in. Try not to let it. Gazing over the left shoulder. Inhale, sitting up a little bit taller. Exhale, twisting a little bit deeper. And one more inhale. And exhale. Coming back to center, switching sides, straightening the left leg. And the right foot bends, the right knee bends. You have about a foot, foot and a half between the, between the legs. And on the inhale, right arm kind of reaches up, reaching forward, palm faces back, bend in the elbow. And then the left arm comes behind the back to catch the right hand, squaring the shoulders as best you can. And then shin tucks into the chest. Gently lifting the chin, releasing the right arm. Right arm comes behind the back. Inhale, the left arm lifts. And exhale, take that twist, trying to keep the right knee facing the ceiling. And gaze is over the right shoulder. Taking another inhale and exhale. And let's come back to center. Bring the right leg to meet the left and coming to the top half of the mat if you're not yet there. And on the inhale, arms rise. Exhale, reaching your fingers towards your feet. Try and keep the spine nice and straight. And let's take another inhale and exhale. And releasing the hands from the feet, chin to the chest, slowly rolling up. Reaching the arms out long. And we'll lower down to the sacrum. We'll take an inhale. And let's take an eight count exhale to lower. All right, inhale, exhale, lower two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Reach the arms overhead. Maybe you interlace the hands, press the palms away. Getting a nice side body stretch. You stretch up and down the entire body. And then release the arms by your side, zip the knees into your chest. And we'll set up for two rounds of back bends tonight. Um, if you'd rather opt out, you can bring the feet as wide as the mat, bringing the knees to touch at center. I'm going to take the more restorative variation because my back is bothering me a little bit. If you have a block, you're welcome to place the block um, on any of the three heights horizontally, kind of right on the sacrum. You take this variation. Otherwise, the lower back shoulder blades are rooted down, and you're rooting to your heels as you're inhaling, lifting up, engaging your hamstrings and your glutes to really open up through the hip flexors and the quads. Maybe you interlace your hands under the back, pressing the forearms onto the mat. And keep lifting as you inhale. And exhale, gently lowering down, unless you're in a restorative variation. 
And setting up for your second round, you're welcome to take full wheel, or as you're ready on the inhale, lifting back up into bridge. Maybe you take single leg lifts, right, lifting one, and then the other. Imagining you're squeezing a block between the inner thighs. Let's take another inhale and exhale to lower, releasing the block if you had it. And then we'll all meet with the feet as wide as the mat, knees touching at center, resetting the spine in neutral. And let's draw the knees into the chest, bringing the left knee towards the left shoulder and the right knee towards the right. And coming into happy baby, so catching the outer edges of the feet or maybe your big toes. And you're welcome to sway side to side if that feels good. And gently drawing the knees back together. And we'll take our climb figure four. And so let's cross the left ankle over your right thigh. And hand interlace behind your right hamstring, flexing both feet. Gently switching sides, right ankle over the left side. Again, flexing both feet. And then releasing the right ankle, legs up the wall. Tuck the lower back, under shoulder blades root down, arms by the side, palms face down as you straighten the legs. Maybe you close your eyes, relaxing here for a few rounds of breath. Gently fluttering the eyes open if they've closed. And we're gonna take an inhale and eight count exhale to lower the legs. Engaging the core to keep the lower back rooted down. Here we go. Inhale, exhale, lower two, three, four, five, six, seven, heels hover, eight, heels touch down, pointing the toes for Matsyasana. Fingertips are just under your Seat and then pressing into the forearms, opening through the chest as you inhale. Exhale, head and neck relax back. Three full rounds, open mouth, exhales. And tucking the chin into the chest and gently lowering all the way back down. And hugging your knees in, goal posting the arms, and setting up for our supine twist. Inhale, exhale, knees release to the right as you gaze over the left shoulder. Gently bringing your head back to center, and lifting the left leg and the right, resetting the spine for a moment as you inhale, 
Exhale, knees to the left. Gaze over to the right. Gently coming back to center, using the arms to draw the knees into the chest. As you inhale, preparing for Shavasana, maybe shoulders, neck, and head lift off the mat. And then exhale, letting everything go, taking up as much space as possible, and letting the body and the mind feel the full benefits of this practice. And as you inhale, feeling the belly, the ribs, and the chest expand, taking up space. And as you exhale, feeling the backside body release a little bit deeper on the mat. Slowly starting to come back into the space. Maybe wiggling fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles. Maybe reaching your arms overhead, giving yourself a full body stretch. Maybe you let the lower back arch off the mat. Releasing the arms by your side. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed for the rest of practice. And as you gently roll over onto the right. With little effort, and slowly making your way into a comfortable seated posture top of the mat, and palms can rest face down on the knees, and then drawing the chest forward, inhale shoulders to the ears, and then to exhale relax them down the back, and then getting nice and long through the spine, back the neck. And 
gently bringing the palms to touch at heart center. And in this moment of stillness, calling to your mind quality about yourself that you really value. Completing this sentence and saying it three times. I am. And together, we'll seal tonight's practice with an inhale and an open mouth. Exhale. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining tonight's class. And looking forward to seeing you next Wednesday or next Tuesday. Same time. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your night.